What is up guys and welcome to Space Camp. My name is Andrew and today I'm going to talk to you about how to start a new game in Space Engineers and how to add mods to it in case you're not already aware of that. Now this is something I haven't talked about yet and I, I figure it's probably something to address at some point uh, as some people have been asking me. So the first thing you want to do if you want to start a new game is you want to click on this new game button uh, and you'll see you have three little options up here. You have scenarios, workshops, and custom game. We're most interested in the custom game one but the scenarios show a couple of different scenarios that you may have downloaded or that you may have already like the easy start and the first jump uh, and then the workshop will show uh, workshop things that you might have so I have a solar system one and apparently this one right here but we're interested in the custom game to start a, a, a game that we can set up ourselves so on the left side right here you have a couple of different settings now th this is what you want to set up first because if you try and set up all this first and then you decide you want to switch it's going to change everything so if I change my description right here and then click on this one right here it's gonna switch uh, that it's, it's gonna undo everything I've done there. So you wanna do this side first. Uh, so we've got a couple of different experiences that you could try out. We've got the cra uh, crashed red ship, which is kind of the, um, uh, the the default one, I guess. This is the one that I played so long ago when I first got Space Engineers. Uh, and essentially you're just on a crashed red ship and you get to make your base on an asteroid kind of thing. Um, I don't know how you hit the one asteroid in the middle of the <laughs> space, but that's what that one is. Dead Drop Arena, I'm not sure what that is. I've never, uh, I've never tried that one myself. Easy starts are, well, what they sound like. You pretty much have everything already done for you. You've got ships, you've got turrets, you've got a base with everything you need. It's it's in the name, it's an easy start. So uh, we've got an easy start on uh, the alien planet, easy start on the Earth, we've got an easy start in space, and then an easy start on Mars. And of course, one on the moon. And one on space. A lot of easy starts. I actually don't know what the green is then. But they're all easy starts. Try them out if you want. Uh, empty World is exactly what it sounds like. It's just you in an empty world. Lone Survivor. I'm not quite sure what that is. I haven't tried that one either. Rival Platforms as well. I haven't tried. Uh, but, but Star System is the one that I typically do. Because that is the planet-based one. Where there are three planets. You've got Earth. You've got the alien planet. And you've got Mars. Uh, and then you've got their, their moons as well. And you, you pretty much just start above Earth or above Mars. Or wherever the heck you want. Uh, and that's exactly what it is, a star system. So we're going to do that one for this little tutorial. Uh, so click on star system right here and you have it right here. Give it a name. It uh, doesn't matter what it is, but uh, make sure if you'll remember it, I guess. Uh, description, doesn't matter. Uh, set whether you want to be doing creative or survival. Creative, you have the ability to just place blocks willy-nilly. There's also a couple of cool tools that you can use in creative that you can't use in survival. Like uh, if you hold control, for instance, you can drag things around to make multiple blocks spawn at once. But we're going to be doing survival for this one. Uh, online mode, set it how you want. Offline is you only. Private is people you invite only. Friends are any of your friends can join. And public is anyone can join. Um, so we'll, we'll say, let's turn it to private. Max players sets how many players you can have. Two is what you and one other person. And 15 is you and, fifth, and 14 other people. Um, auto save, probably want that on. It auto saves. Let's move on to the advanced settings. So in advanced settings, we got a couple of, well, we have a lot of things, actually. <laughs> and you definitely want to go in here. You don't just want to keep them as default, because there are a lot of stuff you can change here. So we've got, first and foremost, our inventory size uh, multiplier. And if you keep it unrealistic, you'll be having a, a very slow time. But maybe that's what you're looking for. So we've got realistic times 3 and times 10. Um, I usually keep these on the, the highest setting, so I usually keep them on times 10. But uh, if you're looking for a realistic option, there you go. Assembler efficiency, uh, this is how, uh, how efficient your assemblers are. Um, I usually keep this on times three as well. I usually keep these ones at defaults. Uh, the refinery speed is how fast you can refine raw items into, uh, in, into ingots. Just keep that on 10. Uh, welding speed is how fast you can weld a block. Realistic is painfully slow. I can't imagine what point, point 0.5 would be like, but I usually keep this on five. Uh, grinding speed is how fast you can grind down a block. Uh, environment hostility is are there meteors that are going to come and kill you safe means no normal means a few cataclysm means a lot armageddon means you're going to die asteroid amount is how dense are the uh, are, are the asteroid fields so when you're on one asteroid how far do you have to go to see another asteroid or how many asteroids do you see if it's none then there's no asteroids if it's lowest density then there's not very many asteroids uh, and then up to high density where there are a lot of asteroids meaning if you're on one asteroid you can practically jump to another asteroid. <laughs> not that, not not quite that much, but uh, sound mode is uh, is a bit interesting. You got arcade mode, which is you've got your normal sound right here. So if you're in space, you know you can hear your guns and stuff, and you can hear explosions and stuff with arcade mode. But realistic mode is a bit different. It's more realistic. You can't hear explosions if you're not touching the grid that you're on. So it it gives kind of like a weird uh, sound to everything. More realistic sound. 
uh, so we'll put it on realistic. Limit world size. Uh, I usually keep this on unlimited, but this gives you a world size uh, thing where if you go past this area in the world, you will die, and any blocks that go past that will uh, despawn. Now this is pretty good if you if you like sending things off into space and you don't want them to start lagging up your server. If it's unlimited, they will keep going forever and ever. But if it's on this, they'll eventually despawn, which is, is probably for the best if you like sending things out. Uh, the view distance, how far can you see? I mean, it, it gives you nice little uh, performance indicators here. So if you're doing 50 kilometers, you can see a lot, but it might be a little laggy. Uh, respawn ship cooldown, this is more for, uh, for, uh, for if you're playing with people. So how often do you want people to be able to get in ships? If cooldowns are disabled, that means they can land a ship at your base, kill themselves, go back up, land another ship at your base, kill themselves, go back up, over and over and over if they wanted to. Uh, or they could just fly them off into space, which could be bad. Um, but uh, but yeah, you can set those cooldowns if you want. Um, if I'm playing alone, I usually turn them off. Uh, but anyways, where were we? The day duration is how long is a full 24 hour cycle. So if you set this to two hours, you'll have about an hour of light and an hour of dark. If you want two hours of light, you're gonna have to set this to four hours. If you want, uh, well, one day is, is literally, like if you start playing at 6 a.m., it's gonna be light and it won't get dark until like 6 p.m. So that's, that's fun. <laughs> when I'm doing space camp, I usually set it to one day just because I don't wanna have to deal with the sun going crazy. Uh, max objects is how many floating objects can there be in the area. So if you have this to very high, there could be a lot of floating objects, meaning if you crash a ship, there might be a lot of particles flying around everywhere, which could could, could cause huge performance delays. Uh, I usually keep this around 64. I like, it's just kind of like that if I'm playing solo. Uh, but uh, if there's a lot of people, you may want to bump this up a little bit. I don't know. It's up to you. Uh, maximum ship size, you can't really change these unless you go into some settings, but this is how big can your ship be in terms of blocks? How bi how many blocks can a player place? Then you've got your PCU. Uh, now PCU is essentially a an indicator given to given by Keen Software House as to what blocks uh, use up the most um, uh, CPU power or, or memory or whatever, some, some, some metric. Every block has a different PCU value, so things like a gravity generator might have a way higher PCU value than things like a normal block. Uh, because it would use it would it would cause it would cost more computations. Block limits means do you want to do you care about any of this? So if you don't care about any of this and you just want to go ham, turn off those block limits and you can do whatever the heck you want. You will get a performance warning here. Uh, please disable this only for experimental purposes. If you're feeling experimental, go ahead and disable it. Your call. Uh, max backup saves. How many backup saves can you have uh, in total? Uh, just in case like your game crashes and that sort of thing. Uh, okay, so now we're getting on to the fun little checkboxes. These are these are where the real fun is. Okay, we've got auto healing, which means if you take damage, you'll heal up to 75%. If it's turned on, you won't heal at all if it's turned off. Uh, you can always heal yourself with a medical bay, but this is auto healing, so you heal magically. Uh, enable spectator, that gives you a nice little spec cam that you can fly around in. Uh, turn that on or off. If you have multiple people in the server, I would probably turn it off just because they're probably going to abuse it. Um, no matter. If you are the admin, you can always use spectator camera, whether this is on or off. Uh, show player names uh, puts a little player name over people's heads. Uh, thruster damage is if you're on a ship that has a thruster pointed down at a block, will it damage the block? Uh, if that's on, then yes. If that's off, then no. Weapons enabled, so are you allowed to kill people with weapons? Yes or no. Just uh, destructible blocks, meaning is if you shoot a block, will it start to destroy? Yes or no. Enable tool shake, so when you're using your tool, does it shake? <laughs> I mean, these are pretty pretty self-explanatory. Uh, Voxel Hand is one of the little bit less self-explanatory ones. That's essentially a, um, a a way that you can actually edit the voxels of the planet. So uh, everything you see in the background here, these are all voxels. And if you have that enabled, there is a way to go in and actually edit this stuff. So add your own land, kind of, or, or remove it. So that's Voxel Hand. Uh, I usually keep this off because I don't like using that <laughs> enable third uh, third person view allows you to press v to go into third person or not your call air tightness is a is another big one uh this takes up a lot of cpu but if your pc can handle it it's a fun one uh definitely so uh this means if you're in space and you have a nice enclosed little area and you decide to make it airtight with an oxygen tank and a vent can you do that so yes or no it's your call if it's turned off you cannot make anything airtight at all it just won't work um, in fact, it'll give you a warning if you try and try and do it. <laughs> uh, but enable convert to station. So, are you allowed to convert a uh, a ship into a station? Uh, stations don't uh, don't move. I'll think. 
I'm not entirely sure actually about that. I'll have to do a little bit more research. I don't think stations move uh, according to gravity, uh, so they'll just kind of stay there if you convert something to a station. But yeah, that's a setting. Um, enable your jetpack, so are you allowed to press X to use your jetpack and fly around? Yes or no. If it's off, you cannot use your jetpack at all. It just won't be an option. You're going to have to use ships to get around, essentially. Uh, voxel destruction, so can you shoot the ground and it makes a hole? That's voxel destruction. Uh, are wolves enabled? So that those are essentially just little little cyber wolves that, that run around on the planet Earth and try to attack you and sometimes get glitchy. Uh, so do you want to enable those? Gives you a little challenge sometimes. Uh, remote block removal. I'm not sure what this is actually. Uh, yeah, I'm not entirely sure what this one is. I, I think it means that if you have, if you're connected to a terminal that, it, I, I'm actually not sure. I'm not sure. I don't know. I'm not going to, I'll post this in the uh, description if I figure out what this is, but I'm not entirely sure what. Uh, turret friendly damage. So can it kill you? If it's shooting at something else and you get in its way, probably give it a, a Darwin Award for that one if you jump in the way of a turret. But <laughs> enable respawn ships. So are, are, when you respawn, are you allowed to respawn in a ship or do you have to respawn in a med bay? Uh, that's a fun one. Uh, okay, on to this side. We've got a couple more settings. Oh, this is fun, isn't it? There are a lot of settings in this game. Um, delete respawn ship. This is essentially if, you, if you've if you landed your respawn ship uh, and you want to log out. If this is enabled, your respawn ship will be deleted. If this is not enabled, your respawn ship will stay forever. So choose that at your own will. Enable copy paste is grayed out for some reason. I'm not sure why. That's probably a creative only setting, uh, if I had to guess. But uh, copy paste is control C, control V. Is it control C, control V? There's copy paste options, so you, co you can copy a whole grid and then paste it. Uh, reset ownership resets every everyone's ownership to um, to to nobody. Uh, I tried this once and it actually didn't work out very well, so I'm not entirely sure how that one works. Perm death uh, means if you die, you're gonna lose all your stuff. It's essentially gonna it won't destroy the world um, as some like Minecraft sometimes does that. It removes the save. No, it won't do that. It'll um, it'll make it so that you don't own the stuff anymore, essentially. Uh, so cargo ships, do you want cargo ships flying around? Random NPC cargo ships. Uh, In-game script, some people want to disable this. This is actually disabled by default, which I think is kind of odd. But uh, the scripts are essentially, if you have an inventory manager, or if you want to code something with a programmable block, that's a really powerful tool. Uh, however, if you're playing with friends, sometimes they could abuse it, or something like that. So that's your call. I would probably usually turn that on, because if it's just me, eh, whatever. <laughs> Adaptive simulation quality. Um... I'm fairly certain this one just lowers the settings a little bit to make it so that it's um, it, you, you get more frame rate. Uh, random encounters. Do you want to encounter random things every once in a while? This is like ships and stations and that sort of thing when you're flying through space. Uh, enable that at your own uh, <laughs> at your own will. Uh, enable oxygen, meaning do you need oxygen to breathe? If it's disabled, you won't. If it's enabled, you will. Um, enable sun rotation, so does the sun rotate around the, the, the planets? Uh, in Space Engineers, it's a little bit weird because the sun is in fact rotating. The planets don't rotate, they're stationary. And then the sun is what rotates to create day and night. Um, so if you turn that off, the sun will not rotate on its own. You'll have to rotate it manually using uh, admin stuff. But uh, I would keep that on probably, otherwise this setting up here has no, has no bearing. Uh, anyways, unsupported stations. This one's another fun setting that I never turn on. <laughs> spawn with tools. So if you die, do you want to spawn with the default starting tools? Enable drones. So uh, do the do the space pirates attack you with drones? Yes or no? Uh, enable spiders. So when you're on Mars, uh, or no, not Mars, alien planet, do spiders spawn and try to kill you? Enable sub sub grid damage rather. Uh, not 100% sure what this one is, but it's something to do with rotors and pistons and stuff. Um, so when you have a subgrid like a rotor, uh, can, can that subgrid damage the main grid is what that is. I would just probably keep it off because <laughs> I don't know much about it. So I would, I would keep it off. Enable unknown signals. These things are random random uh, drone things that fly down to the ground. You can go and pick them up and you could win a, a cool prize. They have random things in them. So if you want those off for some reason, you can turn them off. If you want them on so you can go and farm those those skins or whatever. There it is. Okay, that is all of the settings. So choose these at your own will. Uh, it's all it's all up to you. This is your game. Uh, once you're done, click OK. We're gonna go into mods now. If you've already installed mods, then um, that's good. If you haven't installed mods, what you want to do is you want to go into mods and you want to browse the workshop right here. It's gonna pull up some things that you can't see because of the way I'm recording this. But essentially, you can fly around the workshop and and grab mods that you want. 
Uh, once you find a mod that you want, click subscribe, and that mod will pop into here. You might have to restart the game, not 100% sure. Um, but the mod will pop up into here. Uh, now, to add it to your game, what you want to do is you want to click on the mod and click this small little activate mod button. That'll bring it over to this side. These are the active mods, these are the available mods. Now, if you decide you don't want to do this for everything, you can click this button, which will activate all mods. Now, if you did this by accident, like I usually do, you can do this one, which will deactivate all mods. Then you can just add the ones you want, like treadmill. So there you go, that's how you add mods. But wait a second, what if you already have a game? and you want to add mods to it, or you want to change some settings. Well, let's do that. So if you want to do that, let's let's bump out of here real quick. When you want to start, just click start and you're good to go. It'll load into your game and you can spawn in your first respawn ship. Fun stuff, right? Uh, but click, oops, I clicked start. <laughs> well, I guess we're going to see how to start. All right, so the world has loaded. And the first thing you're going to notice when you start here is you got this medical rooms area. Currently, you have none because you've just spawned, but you can spawn in a ship. So if you spawn in a planetary lander, it'll put you above Earth, essentially in a planetary lander. If you do the Mars one, it'll do the same thing for Mars. The alien planet will do the same thing for the alien planet. Then you have your respawn ships, small drill ships, escape pods, uh, respawn ships, and spacesuits. Now you might say, hey, this small, small drill ship looks cool. Let me try and land this on Earth. The only problem is that this doesn't have the required thrusters to land on Earth, which means if you try to do it, you're going to find yourself crashing into Earth. You can try it. I've done it multiple times. It's it's a, it's a hoot. It's always fun. Uh, but click one of these. I prefer one of these three. And then respawn. If you want to spawn in space, you can choose one of these ones right here. Uh, or choose one of these and go fly in space. It's your call. But, uh, but if you want an in-depth tutorial on how to do this or an in-depth gameplay, uh, go check out the Let's Play series, Season 1. It actually shows how to land in a planetary lander and then set up your base. Uh, episodes 1 through 5, roughly, will go over that stuff. So that's how you do that. What if you want to change some of the settings when you already have the world created? Well, let's go back to the main menu. Welcome back to the main menu. We want to change some settings in the world we just created. Well, to do that, let's go to Load Game. Uh, we're going to see our world here. It's actually this one. I renamed it. It's not the... <laughs> Not the crazy one. It's called Tutorial World. Blah, 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 blah. So we're going to click on that and we're going to click Edit Settings. Just like that. And from here, you can edit all the same settings that I showed you before. You can turn it into Creative if you want. Or you can turn it into Survival if you decided to start in Creative and now want to go Survival Mode. You can change the online settings of this. You can change any of the advanced settings down here. And you can also change what mods are included. From here, we can we decide we like the treadmill, but we also want a clock to find out how long we've been running on the treadmill. Then uh, we can do that. Click OK, OK, and this world is saved right here. So, um, so yeah, there you go. That's essentially how to do it. Click load, and you can load right back into the game. Well, that is everything that you need to know about how to start a world in Space Engineers, how to actually create all the settings. In case you didn't know, I really hope this helped you. If you like the video, please hit the like button, put your comments and your suggestions down below in the comments section, and I will see you guys in the next episode of Space Camp.